Time to focus on business. Business editor Mike Apple joining us now. Mike OPEC deciding to maintain production despite the plunging price of crude. Yeah, the United Arab Emirates uh, oil minister overnight, uh, Ted, saying that, uh, you know what, it's not their problem. It's more of a North American production problem, and they're specifically targeting the U.S. shale producers. Uh, basically, they're going to have to blink first if they want the price for oil to recover. And on that, overnight, we saw prices for oil drop more than 4% at the weakest of the day, and right now hovering around $45 per barrel to start the New York trading session. We're down about uh, one and three quarters percent, about $1.30 at last check. So the slippery slope continues for oil, which uh, just in the past two trading days has lost about $4 per barrel and dropping ever further. And wholesale gasoline, it is now below $1.30 per gallon. So in many places in the United States, for example, you're filling up for much less than $2 per gallon. Implications from this, of course, are on the Canadian economy and what it all means for government revenues and economic forecasts. We might hear a signal today from Deputy Governor Timothy Lane. He's speaking in Wisconsin, and this is a speech ahead of next Wednesday's decision on interest rate policy by the Bank of Canada. So does the central bank start to send out some signals about well, what the price for oil all means to our economy, and do they start lowering economic projections? Something to watch for later this afternoon, and of course, implications on that from our for our Canadian dollar, which opens the day at just 83 and a half cents U.S., basically a five-year low. It's also it's just a tough time to be a central banker. Uh, bank of England Governor Mark Carney, who was of course uh, previously at our Bank of Canada, well, today uh, they put out the U.K. inflation report, and it's at a record low. And that's because of falling energy prices and also a price war in the grocery store sector in the UK. But it raises some questions about uh, the forecast that central bankers put out because a year ago all the talk was that the Bank of England would be the first to raise interest rates post-recession. That is off the table now with these very low inflationary figures. We start the day with a little bit of upside momentum on the major markets. It's the triple A effect. Apple, Amazon.com and Alcoa all trading higher on Wall Street and hopefully a few buyers coming back into the Bay Street market today after a triple digit loss Monday. Ted, back to you. All right, good stuff. Thank you, Mike. That's business editor Mike Apple this morning. You can hear Mike on 660 News at 26 and 56 after the hour.